National Advocate of Nigeria, Yakubu Chonoko Mikhail, graduated from the Faculty of Law of the Amadebelo University in Zaria in 1989. After attending the law school, he was called to the bar. A year later, he started his law practice at Danladi Bamayi and Co. He rose to become the head of chambers and resigned in 2003 to start his private law practice in his name, YC Mikhail and Co., with offices in Abuja and Sokoto. In 2011, he was conferred with the prestigious rank of Senior Advocate of Nigeria, SAN. YC, as he is fondly called by his admirers, is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, UK. He's also a graduate of Rema Bible Training Center, Nigeria, where he was awarded a diploma in ministerial training with an emphasis on societal leadership. Mr. Mekel has held several positions within the Nigerian bar and is the current chairman of the NBA Welfare Committee. I began our chat with how he intends to deal with the divisions in the bar and ensure an all-inclusive bar. The, the legal profession itself, it, it's primarily called to the place of leadership by reason of the privilege that we have as lawyers to be schooled, trained and instructed on the subject of justice. And so there is a need for all lawyers, and here I'm talking about Lawyers, whether performing the role as ministers in the temple of justice on the bench or as members of the bar. So once there is that clear understanding of that primary responsibility of the call upon every lawyer to the person of justice, and that that is the primary motivation for the way we do things. We would recognize who we are first and foremost and be motivated to do what we are called to do as leaders in the society, socioeconomic change makers in the society, political change makers in the society. And we would see less or even no such divisions that you are talking about. And the Nigerian Bar Association is the body that is recognized to speak for every member of the legal profession. So there may be some groups here and there, even the body of senior advocates, for instance. Uh, it's a part of the Nigerian Bar Association. So uh, all we need to do is to let our members have this clear understanding of first and foremost who we are, what should motivate the actions that we, we do, in the discharge of those primary responsibility. And I'm sure with that understanding and engagement between all these seemingly uh, different groups within the Nigerian Bar Association, we'll come to that understanding and we'll be able to continue to be that united force that would uh, speak for the people of this country and also for the members of the Nigerian Bar Association. So what we'll do is actually to to speak to our members, to let them understand who we are. Many do understand who we are and what we are called to do. Many do not, and we need to speak to ourselves. We need to sit down in a room and have this truthful conversation amongst ourselves. And that is the only way we can play the leadership role that we are called to play primarily as members of the legal profession. One of the issues that, I, that is also a sore topic for a lot of lawyers is the issue of ethics amongst lawyers and even non-lawyers. It's not clear what has become of the senior lawyers who were involved in the issue of conflicting expert orders. We saw that the former CGN moved against some of the judges that yeah. were involved but the NBA on its part said that it was collating the lawyers involved and it would report them to the LPDC but so far we don't know how that case has progressed. But um, I read your 28-page manifesto and saw that you addressed the issue of professional conduct and discipline. You also said that the current administration had made a case for the review of the LPDC rules to provide for the participation of the MBA yes. in the disciplinary process of members, and that your administration will pursue this to ensure that the MBA fully participates with renewed vigor and purposefulness. How long does it take to review the LPDC rules? Typically, how will your administration speed up the process and ensure that there is discipline among lawyers in the profession. 
Okay, so I, I was privileged under the administration of uh, Mr. A.B. Mahmoud to be a member of the, the Legal Practitioners Regulation Review Committee set up by his administration uh, with the view to look at the legal profession and come up with regulations that would guide the conduct of its members. And um, a report was put together by that committee and the body of senior advocates of Nigeria also did some work because that would necessarily entail the, the review of, of the existing legislation, the Legal Practitioners Act. Also the body of benchers equally did some work in that respect and there was a harmonization process and a proposed amendment bill was sent to the National Assembly. Now, there are a few areas of uh, contention between the Nigerian Bar Association, the body of benchers, with respect to certain provisions of that bill. And uh, that has been taken up by the president uh, of, of, of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Olubide Apata. Uh, only recently he did a letter uh, restating the position of the Nigerian Bar Association with respect to uh, the provisions of that bill, uh, particularly the fact that the Nigerian Bar Association is strongly opposed to the body of benchers having control over legal profession in Nigeria, which is a view that I strongly support myself. And uh, so with respect to the discipline of senior lawyers, uh, whenever they can misconduct themselves. Th that is something that we would do without batting an eye. Because without the discipline of our members, there is no way we can earn the confidence of the public to drive the leadership that we are called to do naturally as lawyers. So the Nigerian Bar Association is uh, handicapped in some way because if the public uh, has complained that, okay, we, we report members of the Nigerian Bar Association and you, either you are slow in dealing with their issues or you don't do anything at all. The solution is not to take out the, the Nigerian NBA Bar Association, Association completely. Okay. Make those who are supposed to do what they need to do, carry out their responsibility so that issues of discipline, whenever we receive complaints against members, those issues are entertained and dealt with expeditiously. That is the only way we can get the sort of confidence from the public to continue to look up to us as those that are called to provide the leadership that they are looking for in the country. Another issue that I want you to speak to is perhaps the greatest challenge that is facing the legal profession today, how to tackle the issues of unemployment, lack of opportunities, poor pay, inadequate training, especially for the large army of young lawyers mm. in the country. What have you done in the past to help tackle these issues and what more needs to be done? We, we are in a global community today. Technology has brought disruptions in what we used to know as the market. Our markets are no, local, no, no longer local. Uh, our competitors are no longer those who are located in the same place that we are because just the same way that you can take your handheld device to access what is happening in Singapore, what is happening in New York and Canada and the UK is the same way that our own colleagues who are also in these different locations across the globe can access what we do here in Nigeria. So the only way we can remain globally competitive and, and more so for the young lawyers because uh, we talk about the millennials and maybe the, the Z generation they are the ones who, by reason of generational traits, are so at home with technology. They understand the global language uh, uh, that is spoken globally. And, and so they can compete favorably in that particular space. But the only way they can remain competitive is if their capacities uh, are developed. So we develop the capacities of the lawyers, and that is done by training and retraining, expand the horizon of our practice, we should not just concentrate in the traditional areas of our practice. It is not everyone called to the bar 
that wants to practice law the way we do it. Many would like to join the public service. Many would like to join uh, the armed forces, the paramilitary and all. And, and we believe that on the platform of the Nigerian Bar Association, we can make a case for our members. What we intend to do is to establish what we described in our manifesto as an employment bureau, where we will talk to our members and let them know that we are prepared to engage different parastatals and, and establishments of government who engage in employment from time to time. We would do our own due diligence within uh, the Nigerian Bar Association. We we'll bring the best of us and offer to these organizations that are, are employed. So we believe that these are some of the things that we can do in order to bring down unemployment amongst uh, our young lawyers and also to help young lawyers make sure that they have uh, startup capital. For the first time in the history of the Nigerian Bar Association, we have a saving, 1.5 billion naira. What do we intend to do to augment that? We are going to have to talk to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Consider law firms as small and, 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 and medium enterprises. You don't suffer any risk in doing so. A zero risk when you are given someone who has been trained as a lawyer, someone who knows uh, uh, what, what he intends to do, as a legal practitioner, a legal practitioner has identified a particular area of practice he wants to start up his business. What, what may be some of our colleagues we need, depending on the jurisdiction where they practice, may just be two million naira, or maybe a little less, either to start up the business or to augment what what they are already doing, and and that way, from one, from from a sole proprietorship of that business, he grows the business to a point where he can bring in someone also to employ. So that way we can, uh, we can begin to reduce the, uh, the problem of unemployment. Let me change gear and move to another issue that is very topical. It's generally agreed that female lawyers are underrepresented in the legal profession, especially in litigation. They are also victims of sexual harassment, as we've heard in recent times. We've had specific cases. A lot more female lawyers are looking outside the profession to other career paths. I know that the MBA has come up with a sexual harassment policy, but then we're at the stage of implementation. But how will you address this issue going forward? We would make sure that whoever is found uh, uh, involved in bullying or sexually harassing a colleague and, and let me say that we also have cases of the female lawyers harass, sexually harassing the male lawyers. I mean, that may not be as rampant, but we have to accept the fact that this is something that is also, uh, that is also going on. And, and what we intend to do is to make a proposal that when someone is found to have been involved in something like that, then it will be treated as a case of professional misconduct and will be dealt with as such. And if we find anybody, we will name you, we will shame you, and if we get to the point of, cons uh, of, of dealing with that as an issue of professional misconduct, why not? We will do that. Finally, what's that thing that you say stands you out from the other candidates and why should your colleagues trust you with their votes? I am not someone who is transactional. I relate with people. I keep my relationships. That is what I do. And I think that, by the special grace of God, is something that we need at the leadership of the Nigerian Bar Association. A leader that you can trust, a leader that respects you, a leader that cares for you, a leader that will not do anything to hurt you a leader that will make sacrifices for you. That is something by the special grace of God that I believe I am bringing to bear in that office. And that is something that I, I believe that the Nigerian Bar Association needs. 
and I expect that members of the Nigerian Bar Association have placed premium on, on those qualities and would like to have someone who can offer such service, who can offer the service of leadership on the platform of honesty and integrity, serve them at the level of the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. And that I would only do and can only do by the special grace of God.